Hi everyone, it's me again, Doris Raymond from The Way We Wore in Los Angeles. This episode was basically inspired by two amazing people that live here in the LA area. They actually live in Malibu and um, it's the Crawfords and um, we'll call it the Crawford Collection. They have their pieces up at auction at Bonhams. And I had um, the privilege of seeing a Zoom call with the woman who facilitated this auction. And um, it just kind of blew my mind, you know. Collectors are an odd breed, and I'm going to say I fall into that category as well. One of the things that I love to collect are art jewelry pieces, and the Crawfords have taken it to a level that I could only dream of. Uh, partly because of financial um, availability. And if you go online and look at what they had for sale, you'll see what I'm talking about. But um, I did bring the catalog. I went to the preview today, and it really inspired me to bring out the pieces that I've collected over the years. Uh, some may have, you know, pretty good value to them, and others are really more... Um, because I fell in love with the craftsmanship, the materials used, and the overall aesthetic, and of course the condition. I gotta tell you that any of you who have had um, the time or the location to come and visit the store, you'll see that I'm not one that's driven by labels. I know that sounds like an odd thing to say when we've done episodes like uh, on Yves Saint Laurent or Balmain, but those are older pieces that are really more collector's items. As far as contemporary pieces go, I am not really driven to carry what everybody else carries, which may be actually shooting myself in the foot. But that's just what it is. You know, I look at things like the photographic uh, investment world. Maybe 20 years ago, people were only buying photographs that that were done by really famous high-profile photographers. But during the evolution, anonymous photography began to take a hold. And I really feel like starting off as a collector, you don't have to go for the big names. You just need to go for the integrity of the piece, the quality of the piece, the design of the piece, and how it hits you in your gut, okay? So I'm gonna show you a few pieces. Some are designer pieces. Um, if you think about modern jewelry, like the last quarter of the 20th century, you have several movements. You have the steampunk, you have the brutalist, you have the modernist, which started a little bit earlier. And um, all of these are unique in their own kind of funky way. And what I've pulled out for you is a, a true eclectic assortment of things. Uh, we'll start with the most valuable. If you saw my whimsy episode, you know that I pulled um, Pal Capenye, who's a Hungarian, now Mexican. He chose to live his life in Mexico. Um, he is an artist that works, creates sculptures, jewelry. And there was one necklace that we had that was a woman and a man, and the woman had clear breasts and the man had a clear penis. Well, this extraordinary, uh, it is um, a piece that articulates and moves. It's kinetic and it is a signed Pal Capenye piece. His pieces can be found on the internet and they're pretty, pretty expensive. Um, I think there's at least a dozen on first dibs. Most of them are signed and he tends to use bronze as his medium. Um, another Pal Capenye piece uh, is this massive, it's a, it's a clunker, uh, of um, basically a woman and she looks like she's got boxing gloves on, but it's a fabulous choker, the way it falls on your neck. And it's a very substantial piece. It also doubles up as a weapon. Anyway. <laughs> uh, um, I just love looking at how things are crafted. And um, the other Palcapeña piece is this bangle, which you have to look at closely. It has a lot of 
architectural and symbolic things like the, the uh, Star of David, there's uh, scorpions, uh, looks like there's the Talmud in there. And uh, if you've ever done wax sealing on an envelope, these stamps remind me very much of a wax seal that was stamped. And this is a bronze casting. Then we have another articulating Palcapena piece, which has matching earrings. And um, you can hear it makes a lovely sound. It's bronze. You, you can't even imagine how much time it took to create this because every single piece moves. It's really beautiful. It feels great on. And then it has matching clip earrings as well. Um, I think that's it as far as Palcapena pieces that I brought out. Then we have uh, one of my all-time favorites is this kinetic necklace, which I would call modernism. If you see, it can be flat, but the beauty of it is it has four spheres, not including the enamel piece in the center. So it changes, and uh, it's beautifully constructed. It's very light, and it's one, actually one of my favorite pieces. Um, I brought a few other modernism pieces. This is a William Spratling, has um, azure light or soda light, I'm not sure, but um, it has uh, sterling silver and the iconography on this is very similar to a lot of the works that he does, which he took inspiration from a Mexican architecture, Aztec arch architecture. Um, what other minimalist pieces do I have? Well, on a very, oh, this one, oh my God. This one, modern, modernism. I bought this one, believe it or not, in Santiago, Chile, in an antique mall. It was the only thing I found that I wanted to invest in. And I thought it was just beautiful, the balance. And it wasn't very expensive, you know? So you don't necessarily have to spend a lot of money to have great pieces. This massive, this honker of a necklace, it weighs a lot, has uh, amethyst crystals, and it kind of engages in itself to lock in place. There is a signature. I haven't been able to figure out who it is. Um, but talk about a statement piece, right? It is pretty significant. Um, you may be wondering about my necklace. I have got to do some research on this because I can't imagine that this was done by someone who didn't have uh, advanced skills in jewelry making. It's enamel, sterling silver, and copper. So it's a nice mixed medium. Um, also, brutalist pieces. Now, what is brutalism? It's basically rough, unfinished, and um, it creates its own kind of feeling because it's not polished and minimal like modernism. Um, I guess this would be a great example of a um, brutalist brooch. I think this one's resin with a carnelian center, so it's very lightweight. But the roughness to me is what I respond to. Uh, this necklace as well mixed medium. It has copper, tin, and brass. Makes a lot of noise, like the Palcapena piece. I haven't been able to find a signature on it, but, you know, you wear a basic black piece and then a necklace like this, and it totally makes the outfit. And this wasn't very expensive. I bought this at one of the vintage shows from one of the dealers, and... Um, you know, I mean, I guess it's relative what, what is expensive, but I think I paid uh, about $400 for it, and it's not for sale. And then, as we're, oh, steampunk. I should show you this. This wonderful brass piece has cogs from probably a watch mechanism, and it actually disengages which, um, if you don't want to wear the whole long pendant, you can 
shorten it. Um, beautifully constructed once again and uh, lovely patina as well. You know, it's not quite gold and it's not quite uh, brassy brassy. Um, we also included um, things that are a little more conservative but still brutalism. This pendant necklace has real cultured pearls and um, it's balanced beautifully. And let me see. Last but not, oh, actually, there's a few others that I haven't covered. This floated my boat because it's silver, glass, semi-precious stones, and it has this uh, connection at the neck that um, is, uh, I guess, is, I don't know if it's uh, aquamarine, but um, it's definitely an artisanal piece. And it falls just, I don't want the microphone to hit, falls just at the right length, I think. That's the other thing I like to do, is I like to find things that don't need to really be altered lengthwise. Because um, I don't want to ruin the integrity of the original design. Uh, on a less expensive level, this is kind of a, not a pot metal, but it's a base metal necklace with a fabulous design to it. Uh, the centerpiece actually moves, and uh, there is no signature, so I have no idea who the maker is, but I think it's a, it's a beautiful piece, right? And last but not least, this, I believe the stone is Peruvian, and you can see it's sterling silver, the graduated tears, but you can see the almost granulation of rectangular, bleh, rectangular pieces that surround the large stone. And uh, it's a very quietly elegant piece, Brutalist. I also should mention that a lot of the chains on Brutalist pieces are very similar. They're like long uh, links with rings on the end. I don't know if that's kind of an unspoken connection, but I noticed that a lot of my pieces have that. So I want to say, you know, your body's a canvas. Why not play with it and have things that really express who you are? And these things kind of emit an artist's persona. So don't be afraid to just kind of experiment with things. If you go to flea markets or antique shows or vintage clothing shops, really test things out and see what floats your boat. And who knows, you may be starting a collection that would rival the Crawfords. Um, and if you have a chance to go online, you can learn a lot from this catalog, which is online. They did um, essays on various artists like, um, well, we'll say Margaret DePata, Ed Wiener, um, Sam Kramer, so many of these iconic jewelry designers. Uh, one of the ones that I wasn't familiar with was Peter Maccarini. And oh my God, I just, I saw so many pieces of his that I hope to bid on. And uh, who knows, maybe in a future episode, you'll be able to see what I acquired from this collection. So I think that's it. I hope I didn't babble too much, but these are things that I love. And I know that a great many of you appreciate my taste and the things that I've shared with you in the past. So I hope you enjoyed this one too. In the meantime, if you did enjoy it, please give us a thumbs up. And uh, if you haven't subscribed to our episodes, please do so. That helps our logarithm in actually having um, referrals, actually. YouTube will refer our episodes. And uh, we are making a concerted effort to do one episode every other week. Sometimes it's not possible. I'm actually going away for a couple of weeks, so we'll still try to do it. But in the meantime, please take care of yourselves. 
Uh, be safe and be well. And thank you so much for all your support and all your positive thoughts. It's greatly appreciated. Bye. <laughs>